Shooting today, MSNBC brought on counterterrorism expert, expert Malcolm Nance, who quickly related the shooting to, of course, American guns. Well, I'm most curious about whether the type of attack that he carried out was whether it was focused on Steve Scalise. The most important thing that we need to understand from this is this is what happens when you have a you know an overproliferation of guns, and it's ex it's to be expected to a certain extent. Yeah, it's to be expected. I mean. Politics had nothing to do with it, and neither did terrorism. Weird that a counterterrorism expert wasn't eager to make the attack about terrorism. That's not surprising because two months ago, Nance nominated a Trump property in Istanbul, Turkey, to be, quote, the first ISIS suicide bombing of a Trump property. He said that. Mark Stein is an author and columnist. He's been warning about the gradual embrace of violent rhetoric on the left for some time, and he joins us now. What do you make of that? Well, that guy is a poser. I take it he's not really in the hotel bombing business, uh, which I don't take lightly. I, I like to stay at the Grand Hyatt in Amman until it got blown up. Exactly. Uh, and in fact, a Hollywood producer and his daughter were killed at their wedding uh, at that hotel in those hotel bombings in Amman. That's a real thing, and it's a kind of turn-on. Uh, for the left to, to joke about this. Uh, in, a, in a sense, one has to uh, have more admiration for the ISIS guys who actually slice off the heads uh, than for someone like Kathy Griffin, who just gets a sort of frisson of edginess uh, doing a photoshopped photo shoot uh, with a severed head. That's, that's wanting all the glamour of violence without having to do it. And down on street level, I think if you, if you actually normalize that kind of uh, approach to domestic politics, you do increase the likelihood uh, that some loser in somewhere uh, halfway across the country on the other side of the map is going to get in the car and drive to Washington and live in his van for a couple of months and actually do something. Uh, and we have to, uh, I, that's why I think this idea of this, th th this uh, glamorized uh, faux, edgy, uh, political violence culture actually has to be dialed way back. It, it's funny, though. So much of the attacks you hear from the left strike me as transference in the sense they accuse their opponents of things of which they're personally guilty. You know, you're right. violent. You're, you know, you, you're racist. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it's, it's always things yeah. obvious of them. They seem obsessed with violence. I mean, not all of them. Yeah. A lot of good liberals out there. But you know what I mean. There's a certain kind of activist type who thinks about violence a lot. No, that's true. And if it, it was true eight years ago, for example, at the dawn of the Obama era, there was a whole kind of Obama assassination porn, uh, not from the right, but from leftist colon, uh, uh, columnists uh, fantasizing about how the right were itching to assassinate yes. Obama. Uh, and there was some guy, I think it was in the, uh, in the Ottawa Sun of all places, who wrote uh, like a 700-word column describing in detail how some leave Harvey Oswald was just itching to blow the first black president's head off. And do you know that what I find most revolting about this, and this is that if we were to learn a lesson from what happened today, um, I think we should actually put our foot down about um, the, the kind of uh, what Orwell uh, called the pansy lefts, uh, sort of appropriation of real heroism and real courage. For example, the Trump resistance. Resistance is a term uh, that has a specific meaning. It's if your country, the, the, the French resistance, exactly. because their country was illegally occupied by the Nazis. What did not now, waged I, against Vichy. That's a resistance. Yes, yes. And, and, and so Frenchmen risked their lives to rid their country of a foreign occupier. My mum, uh, uh, God bless her, happened to be Belgian. A Belgian, and lost her childhood growing up under the Nazis. And there was, uh, as ridiculous as it may sound, a Belgian resistance. There is no American resistance. And to put it in terms leftists can understand, you're guilty of cultural appropriation. When you're some pampered, stupid, middle-class snowflake, and you think you're part of some resistance, no, you're not. You've no idea what people who grow up under real tyranny have to live through. The fact is, uh, the candidate you had was no good and she lost the election. Tough. Try again in 2018, try again in 2020, but don't culturally appropriate real courage, real heroism, and real resistance. I, I, can, just, I can listen to this all night and nod 
along as you speak. I agree completely. Mark Stein, as always, thank you. Thanks,